If you want to hack with microcontrollers, the Deep Sleep feature can give you nearly twice the battery life with one easy trick. Today, we're going to talk about hacking battery life on this episode of Redia. Microcontrollers are smart, powerful little devices that can be programmed in languages like Arduino, CircuitPython, and MicroPython. Now, if we are using a microcontroller with a battery, we can get these things to last for a very long time. However, there's a trick that microcontrollers can do called deep sleep, which can nearly double the battery life when we're running almost the exact same code. If you want to follow along, you'll need a microcontroller like a D1 Mini, an ESP32-S2, or just an ESP32. You can also get a 100 ohm resistor if you're interested in measuring the battery level, and you'll need a wire or some way of connecting the two pins together that will wake the microcontroller up from its deep sleep. For this example, we're going to be using a D1 Mini breakout board to connect to Adafruit I.O. and log the battery level every 30 seconds until it dies. This should give us a pretty good test of how long it takes for the battery to die when we're using deep sleep and when we're not. We're going to make two different versions of the same code, one that uses deep sleep and one that doesn't. And in order to understand this, we need to understand exactly what is deep sleep. Well, deep sleep is a function of a microcontroller that allows it to turn off all non-essential functions, almost powering off, except leaving on a timer that will pulse power on a specific pin, which can then wake it back up. We'll need to connect that pin to the reset button, and what that means is we're basically restarting this thing every time that we set it off. So when it wakes up from sleep, it doesn't have any memory of what happened before, and we'll need to write our code a little bit differently because of that. Now, this experiment was pretty easy to set up. First, I used ChatGPT to write some code that measures the battery voltage. And second, I uploaded it to GitHub so you can try this out if you want to as well. Now, I also went ahead and took a 100K ohm resistor in order to reduce the voltage that is going from the battery's positive terminal to the AO pin on the microcontroller. And that's just to make sure we don't fry it by giving it too much voltage for it to measure. Now, for the nerds here, there is already a voltage divider connected to the AO pin on the microcontroller. However, we're adding the additional 100K ohm resistor in order to make sure that we don't accidentally fry it by giving it too much voltage. Here is a side-by-side -side comparison of both of my pieces of code, and as you can see, they do the sleep function a little bit differently. Now, this should be easy to set up, and I'm going to use this LiPo battery charger that I got off Amazon to connect this discarded vape battery to the entire setup, and also solder in my 100K resistor to avoid damaging the AO pin. Now that everything is set up and running, I can see that Adafruit I.O. is properly reporting the voltage. So I'm going to create a dashboard, let it run overnight, and see which one dies first. Now later on in the next day, both of them did die, and by far the one that died first was the one that was regular sleeping. It did not perform very well and only lasted about 8 hours, whereas the one that was deep sleeping lasted about 14, giving it roughly double the battery life of the one that was regular sleeping. Now, the reason these died so quickly was for one, the small size of the battery, and for two, the fact that it was doing something that's pretty energy intensive, which is connecting to Wi-Fi and transmitting data. So if we were to space this out, I would expect to see substantially longer battery life and maybe even better gains from our deep sleep program. If you want to try out this deep sleep experiment for yourself, my code is available in the GitHub repository in the description, and the parts here only cost a couple of dollars. You can just download the code, replace your Wi-Fi credentials and Adafruit I.O. credentials, and you should be able to get started logging pretty much whatever you want. Battery life, but also things like temperature data or the result of Wi-Fi scans if you really want to. Now, Deep Sleep does have a couple caveats. You need to structure your code a little bit differently, and you also need to make sure you're connecting the wake pin to the reset pin so it can wake up. Otherwise, it will just kind of stay asleep forever. Despite that, the trade-offs are definitely worth it as we proved by doubling the effective battery runtime of our experiment. That's all we have for this episode of Redia. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.